Remember. Continental. A flight to remember. The pleasure of someone else is something very important to me in love. It would be true, even if I weren't who I am. To be able to know what he's feeling, or to guess. Because pleasing him is my way of pleasing myself, even in little things. So he gives me Chanel number no. five perfume and eau de Cologne. You don't have to ask for it. He knows what you want. Chanel. Audrey Hepburn stars tomorrow night at 11.30. Love American style will not be seen tonight, so that we may bring you the following special program. thought he'd live forever, but he died, 57 years old. They're saying he was much more than a football coach, that he was a legend, a sort of symbol of excellence. But somehow I keep thinking of the time before he was a legend when he was 45 and considered himself a failure. Portrait, Legend in Granite is brought to you by DuPont. DuPont, there's a world of things we're doing something about. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. To this cantor, this Hebrew prayer has an almost miraculous meaning. Nine years ago, Adolf Katz could not sing unto the Lord. Paralysis silenced one of his vocal cords. He could hardly speak. But a remarkable operation gave him back his voice. A tiny amount of DuPont plastic was specially treated and injected into his vocal cord. The DuPont plastic brought back his voice, as it has hundreds of others. One week later, he could sing again. Some say the age of miracles is long past. But don't tell that to Adolf Katz. Mr. Haberling? Yes. I'm Vince Lombardi. Uh, I called you. I'm an assistant coach with the New York Giants. Oh, well, of course, Mr. <laughs> Lombardi. I guess you haven't gotten over the excitement yet, have you? Well, it's uh, never exciting to lose, you know. Oh, I realize that. But that game, I mean, the first championship game to go into overtime. Right. I'll bet three quarters of the country were watching. I heard President Eisenhower even came in off the golf course to watch. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what can we do for you, Mr. Lombardi? Are you thinking of buying a new home, an investment, perhaps? Well, no, not exactly. Uh, no, not that. Uh, well, just exactly what can we do for you? Well, I'm, uh, I guess you could say I'm looking for a job. <laughs> Working for the bank, Marie, not robbing it. Who, the way you put it. But why? You're a football coach. What, was there a mark on my head when I was born saying this one has to be a football coach? Oh. All right. Tell me. 
Tell you what? Stop moping around the room like a wounded moose and tell me what happened. You didn't... I mean, the Giants didn't fire you, Vince. Of course they didn't! You think Wellington Mara's gonna fire me? No. But five minutes ago, I didn't think you'd be pretending excitement about being a bank teller, either. I'm not pretending, and it's not a bank teller, it's a... Marie, I'm... I'm 45 years old. And I'm an assistant coach. That's all I ever have been. That's all I ever will be. But if you remain with the Giants, Jim Lee won't stay on forever. If I thought there was a chance, I'd, I'd sweep out the locker rooms for the next 20 years. I'd give anything just to be able to coach the Giants. But it's just not going to happen. All the head coaching jobs are going to younger men. I'm past it. And if I can't be the best at one thing, then I've got to try something else. Do you understand that, Marie? I guess I understand you. Then you understand that. <laughs> oh. How long do you think you'd last screaming at bank customers the way you do at halfbacks? <laughs> Hello? Who? Just a minute, please. Somebody from Green Bay. I couldn't understand his name. Oh. Who do you know in Minnesota? Minnesota? Green Bay's in Wisconsin. What Minnesota? Get out there. Uh, hello? Doesn't Green Bay have a football team? Yeah, this is Vince Lombardi. No, Vince. A lot of people all over the country think it's crazy for the NFL to have a, a team like this in a small town. But the truth is, the town owns the team. What do you mean by that? Well, there was some talk about moving a long time ago to a big city. But thousands of people bought stock, and put up the capital to keep the team here. You see, Wisconsin people are loyal. They really love football, Vince. But that's testing them pretty hard when you win only one game all season. Uh-huh. That's why we have to find the right man who can turn things around. You'll get a decent salary, absolute authority over the football operation, plus what we feel are some very talented young ball players. Right. Some people believe Paul Horning can become a first-rate quarterback in time. Meanwhile, we'll have to go with the... Ridiculous. What? Horning's no quarterback. He can't throw the ball that well. What he does do is run, block, and kick. <laughs> that man's a halfback, for God's sake. No, that kid Bart Starr, he's your quarterback. Well, we we feel that Starr has promised, but uh, he's so... Yeah, I know how he is. He's timid. Somebody's got to boot him in the rear end and, and tell him how good he can be. And boy, that guy Nitschke. <laughs> There's a guy in my estimation who can... The executive committee is beginning to get the idea that you want the job. Gentlemen, there's one thing I want more than anything in the world. To coach my team in my town, the Giants. Only that's never going to happen. So I figure the next best thing is to beat their brains out. Yes, gentlemen, I want this job. Vince, you lived all your life in New York. Green Bay's a little bit different. I can adjust. Fine. What about your family? Huh. Family's all for it. <laughs> a little brisk, isn't it? <laughs> Darling, the... Uh... Children wanted me to ask you if it would be possible to keep our home here. What? Well, they thought the season's only six months long. They could come to visit during some of the games. Where are they? They're, uh, well, they're a little upset. I promised them I'd speak to you, that's all. 
Well, what are the people in Green Bay going to think? That the coach's family lives in New York, for crying out loud. And another thing, my season doesn't last six months, it's 12 months. They should know that. You don't have to yell, Vince. I do have to yell, Vince. Anybody comes up with a dumb, stupid suggestion like that deserves to get yelled at. They wanted you to know what they feel. I do think we have that right. Oh, so now it's we. You feel that way, too? Yes, I feel that way. I was born in New York, too, you know. You can't expect me to go breathless at the chance to live in a small town that I hardly know the name of. I don't want to go, I admit it. The only reason I'm going is because I love you, Vince. Well, I love you, too. I love you, too, Marie. Sit down, honey. Honey, this, this job means more to me than I can describe to you. And I need all of you with me. Not want, need. I need you there at night. When my head will burst if I have one more thought about football. I need you when we lose. And most of all, to be with me when we win. And if it means that I have to go alone, then I'm not going. It's as simple as that. I thought you hated grandstanding, Vince. What? Very eloquent speech, but dumb, and you know it. You know there isn't a chance in this world that I'd let you stay here or go without us. You are an infuriating, lovable woman, Marie Planets. Oh. <laughs> Only in self-defense. Mm. Oh, I love you, love you, love you. <laughs> Vince, huh? tell me. Hmm? Is it as cold as they say in Wisconsin? Well, sure it's cold. Uh, but it's a dry cold. Listen, we had New York on 46 and 47, was it? <laughs> hey, we really laid down a welcome for you. Hi, how are you? Are you? I want you to meet Marie. <laughs> welcome right. to Lombardi. <laughs> this is Dominic Olenich, uh, Olenich, Olenich, right? Just call me Oli. It's easier on the tongue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Tony Canadeo, you remember him? The best fullback the league ever had. <laughs> We're so glad to have you, both of you. Well, it's, it's very nice to be here. The newspaper guys are already not as many as we expected, but I think they got stuck in the snowbank. <laughs> Should we face the gun? Sure, sure, sure. I'll be right back, honey. Okay. All right. It's good it's such a dry cold. <laughs> what kind of a record are you going to have, Coach? A winning record. The first year? Every year. And that includes the first year? Well, if the first year is a year, then that includes the first year. What the hell kind of question is that? <laughs> How many games will you win the first season? Will you tell us that? Well, here's something I will tell you. Well, what I will say is this. I'll put winning above everything else here. Winning is achieved through discipline and dedication. We will win. That's a promise I make to you and to myself. Then a translation would be the Packers will win two games next year. All right, mister. Let me tell you what winning means. It means, and this is all it means, that you're willing to go longer, work harder, and give more than anyone else. If you're smaller, you better be sure you're quicker. If you're slower, you better hit harder. You know why most people don't win? Because they don't want it bad enough to work harder than anybody else. That's why. Well, mister, I'm willing to work harder. And anybody who plays for me is going to work harder, and that's why we're going to win. Now, you put that to use yourself, and you'll be winning Pulitzer Prizes instead of sitting here in a blizzard asking stupid questions. You're lucky 
she had 50 tons of filth. 50 tons of dust and ash. Yet all of that can be belched out into the air in just one week by that smokestack. What keeps that from happening? Filters. But this company had a problem. Most filters can't stand the combination of broiling heat and abrasive grit. DuPont supplied an answer, a remarkably tough and heat-resistant nylon, DuPont Nomex. That building works like a giant vacuum cleaner. Inside, thousands of these filters, they're made of Nomex. They trap the ash and dust and hold it. Week in, week out, DuPont Nomex filters out all this. Not really unpleasant to look at, but it'd be very unpleasant to breathe. DuPont. There's a world of things we're doing something about. All right, gentlemen. Now, you're all rookies, so you all have the same chance. I decided to bring you out here early for one reason, because once the regular team gets here, I won't have all the time to look at you as carefully as they'd like to. Now, that gives you fellas a bonus. You get a four-day jump on the guy that you're trying to beat out of a job. Make good use of it. All right, Phil, take over for warm-up. You, what are you standing there for? Oh, I... Uh, coach, my name is Max... M I'm not asking who you are, McGee. I'm asking, what are you standing there for? What, uh, do you mean, why did I come by? I mean, why aren't you in uniform? That's what I mean. Oh, well, the veterans don't have to report until Friday. I just thought I'd stop by, say hello, watch the rooks work out. If you're here, you work. Either you get your tail on that field or you get your tail out of here, you understand? Dad, get this man some equipment. Right now, Coach. Come on, Max. Come on, Max. Let's go. I want you back here in three minutes. <laughs> He's a damn madman. Maybe so, but I'll tell you one thing, Max. We ain't gonna lose ten games this year. No way. No, sir. He meant it when he said he was prepared to give anything to win. And what he gave most was hell. One thing about him, he didn't play favorites. He treated everybody the same, like dogs. Another thing we began to realize, the man knew football. How incredibly he knew football. And he knew men. Nitschke, for crying out loud, what kind of a play is that? You couldn't cut it at fullback. Don't you know that linebacker's your last stop? If you can't play any better than that, maybe you'd like to try working out in a popcorn stand. That's where you belong. Oh, what are you standing there for? Try it again! And this time, see if you can make me believe that you're not dancing with them. Come on, Ray. Come on, Ray. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Come on. Come on. Get a stick. Come on. 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 I thought I had seen some progress until today. Today I saw blocking and tackling that wouldn't keep you in a ball game against a team of elderly nuns. So we're going back to fundamentals. Gentlemen, this is a football. Coach, could you take it a little slower? I didn't say that, Paul. Sad. You said it, Max. the beginning of a kind of crack brain friendship between us. And I think it was the beginning of love on the team. I see how you can say that, man. It's different now. It's working. That's what's different. McGee, you know what I'm trying to say now. We're in better shape, but God, our morale's better. There's no question about that. Arnie, what do you think? 
Well, I think I learned more football in a month with Lombardi than I ever thought possible. That's right. But it's been a long dry spell, I'll tell you that. Yeah, no more sneaking out at night after a curfew, not with these double checks and all. All right, the curfew's tough, I'll give you that. But can you name me in? just one man on this squad who at least doesn't respect it? Oh, what I really miss is the scotch. Oh, that good, clear taste of scotch. You remember that, Paul? Do you realize that there are women ten minutes from here? Forget it, Horning. Yeah, Lombardi may be a tyrant or whatever you want to call him, but there's something happening on this team. Yeah, it really was nice of them to put us in a second-floor room. Yeah. With the window that sticks. Not even a drain pipe. Oh, come on, I don't start all that stuff. Well, what's the matter? You went out for recreation a dozen times last year. Well, it's different now. It's not fair to him. And no matter what else, he's fair to us now. Don't forget that. We can restrain ourselves. Another half hour, Max? Yeah, like Fuzzy says, we want to be fair. It wouldn't be fair to wake any of our sleeping teammates, would it, Paul? Say nothing of our sleeping coaches. Everything all right, man? No, fine, oh, there, coach. coach. Good, good. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, Fuzzy, you know what, uh, what time it is? Um, uh, it's about three minutes after 11, coach. Huh. Well, do you know what time curfew is? Well, it's at 11. Then why aren't you in bed? Well, coach, I am in bed. No, you're not. You're sitting on the side of the bed. Now, sitting on the side is not being in bed. That'll cost you $50. Oh, and uh, another 25 for having the light on. Night, fellas. Yeah, he sure is fair. I'll <laughs> say that for him. <laughs> huh, huh, huh. I don't know. Of course, McCann's got the experience. But I kind of like the way that the fellas seem to have confidence in Star. But I'd never forgive myself if Star costs us the game because he's got nervous. Why can't he be nervous? You're nervous. Huh? What makes you think I'm nervous? Maybe because you're talking to yourself. Who's talking to himself? I was, uh, I was talking to you. Oh. Well, I must learn to enjoy those tender little comments about which quarterback to send in first. Oh, you're a big help, you know that? <laughs> oh, Vince. Nobody expects you to show up good against the Bears. You've done everything you possibly could. Now, nothing's enough unless you win, Marie. All right. Talk to me some more. Whisper in my ear about how a 36X will work against a 6-1 defender. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're sure some help, you know that? <laughs> only move the ball on the ground. <laughs> We're using this little steam engine as a symbol of America to show you how the energy shortage could be solved. It could be solved just like that. America could just stop burning energy. Gas, oil, coal. You could abandon your car, shut off your air conditioner, factory wheels could stop turning. Of course that won't happen, but everybody's got to make some adjustments. DuPont's been doing that for years with an energy conservation program. We found ways to squeeze 25% more work out of the energy we burn. Now DuPont is selling this know-how. To date, 59 companies are using it to squeeze more work out of the energy they burn. They're burning up less energy, helping America keep up a full head of steam. DuPont, there's a world of things we're doing something about.
first game together. Let's make it a good one. There's nothing more we can do from here except win. Let's go get it! The Green Bay fans packed the stadium, hopeful of seeing the start of a new era. But it began just like last year. And it continued just like last year. For a while. began to change. The defense helped. discovered Lombardi screaming was much more pleasant when they played well. So they held the Bears again, this time in their own territory. With seven minutes to go, the Bears still had only six points, and the Packers still had nothing. Then the Bears fumbled on their own 26. safety to put a cherry on this Sunday, and the town of Green Bay was about to lose its mind. It's only your first game. Ha! We don't get any better offense than we had today. I'll tell you one thing. Detroit will grind us up a hamburger next week. Uh-huh. You remember that? Good game, Mitch. Thanks. Now, go ahead and make all the noise you want. Only keep it down, huh? <laughs> uh, great game, Coach. Thanks. What's the matter, Ringo? I don't know, Coach. What's the matter, Ringo? Hey, Jim. You get busted up? No, Coach, I'm okay. Then, uh, why the... I just, uh... I just wanted to do some thinking. Oh? Well, anything I can do to help? Coach, do you know what this game meant to me after last year? Jim, you're probably the one man on a team who doesn't have to be ashamed of last year. How many men can make all pro on a team that only won one game? All pro doesn't mean a damn thing when you're going through something like that. Coach, we've got an eight-year-old daughter. And last year, we began to notice she claimed to be sick on Monday. And then one week, uh, I told her she had to go to school. She said she didn't want to go, because all the other kids, all the other kids said her daddy and his teammates were a bunch of bums. You know what they could do to a little eight-year-old kid? Well, they're, they're not going to call us bums this week. I'm not going to call you bums this week. That's for sure. Amazingly, we won the first three games in the season. Then the Rams ripped us 45 to 6. It was the worst defeat ever suffered by a Packer team. We lost five straight. back 
on a winning track. We were there to stay. We ended the season with four straight wins. So we weren't even too surprised when Lombardi threw a party. Those who didn't have wives were ordered to bring their mothers. I thought I told you to lay off the cigarettes. <laughs> Sorry, Coach. You, no. The dust clears. Yeah, no, no, you can't hear my joke. Yes. The dust clears. No, all of these hundreds. Your mother here? Oh, uh, no, Coach. It's, uh, it's a long way up from Louisiana. She ought to be here. I'll tell you what, Max. You can borrow mine for a while. Paul, what an awful thing to say. Your mother's a nice lady. Well, of course she's a nice lady. And I probably would have brought her tonight even if I hadn't been ordered to. Ordered? Who ordered? Did I order? You ordered. You ordered. Well, maybe there was a reason. Was well, there any reason why I couldn't have brought a girl to? Look, if you guys thought about football half as much as you did about girls, we wouldn't have ended up with a lousy seven and five season, you know that? Everyone having a good time? Uh, excuse me, honey. All right, let me have everybody's attention, please. Sit down, boys, sit down. Sit down. I don't think we ought to spend all evening here as, uh, congratulating ourselves over a mediocre season. Now, we're paid to win games, and we didn't win so many that anyone's gonna lose count, that's for sure. But there is somebody here that I want to thank. The wives. You've had to be patient, you've had to sacrifice, and that's different because you're not paid for that. So, I want to offer you a token of appreciation from the Green Bay Packers. Okay, Dad, bring them in. Come on up, Coach. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah, a couple of you boys here, help Dad, huh? Come on, fellas, get off your duffies and give me a hand here. <laughs> Now, pass them all around there, that's it. Every, every lady gets one. And all you fellas that aren't married, I want one of these to go to the most important woman in your life. Your mother. <laughs> okay, ladies, open them up. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Yeah. I'm mailing your mother hers. Oh, oh, that's all right, Coach. I'm going home tomorrow. I can take that. Ah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You think I don't know that you'd have it draped over some barmaid's shoulder in the next half hour? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised? Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to give you one anyway, because I know what you had to put up with this year. Oh, and uh, while we're at it, maybe this will make up for next year. Because I'm going to demand a lot more, a lot more, from everybody. Oh. Well, he'll find a way. Come up, running! Come on, come on, get him up, get him up, get him up, get him up! Come on, Horn and Kramer, let's go! Let's go! Or you'll stay out here until you're all doing right. Come on, get him up! about as much like a man as Mickey Mouse. 
He ought to be back soon. If Lombardi were to come in and out, he'd probably kill you and me just on general principles. It's not like Max hadn't already been caught once. I didn't go with him because I was too tired. <sighs> Can you imagine me being too tired for that? Yeah, well, you were smart. No, I wasn't. I can't get to sleep. <sighs> Thinking about what I'm missing. Yeah, well, I just hope he gets back soon, that's all. That's right, McGee. Make sure it's closed good and tight. Come on in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Tell us. Tell us all about it, McGee. Oh, well, um... You see, Coach, I had this friend who was, uh... Oh, uh, going through this, uh, personal crisis, and I... I felt it was my duty to comfort her. I mean, comfort him. And, oh, uh, you know talked, and I read scripture, and together we found what no, was... No, you, you can stop that, McGee, because this is the place where you're supposed to be, and you weren't here. Now, let's see, last time it cost you a fine of $100. Now, the price has just gone up, mister. This time it's going to cost you $500. Five hundred. And the next time it happens, the price goes up to a thousand. You got that? You, you disgrace you. You risk the future of every man on Fuzzy? this team. Do you hear that? Because you can't yeah. obey the rules. Well, I, think Max just I got don't back. think it's clever at all, mister. As a matter of fact, I think it's pitiful. When a grown man insists on acting like an eight-year-old, then I don't think it's clever at all. I'd feel sorry for you if I didn't feel so disgusted. I'm sorry, Coach. Five hundred dollars! You think about that when you can't get to sleep. Five hundred dollars! And the next time it's gonna be one thousand. Now, do you get that? Uh, uh Coach, I don't... Go to bed! I... And as... McGee? Yes, sir. McGee, you ever find anything out there that's worth a thousand dollars? Wake me up and I'll go with you. <sighs> right from the beginning, the human race has been on shaky ground. Earthquakes have always been a problem, particularly when man built things near the weak spots of the earth called faults. What man couldn't quite figure out was how to build buildings so when the earth would shift, they wouldn't go all to pieces. Then DuPont Teflon arrived on the scene. DuPont Teflon is very, very slippery. Even heavy things slide easily on pads of Teflon. Heavy things like big buildings in Southern California, which are very near faults in the earth. Today, if the earth shifts a little, Teflon is there to keep things from getting all shook up. Slippery Teflon from DuPont. It's helping man live with the earth, despite its faults. DuPont. There's a world of things we're doing something about. Benny and Susan are busy with some meeting at school. Seems like they got something going almost every night. Yes, they're into a lot of things. I can remember a year and a half ago they said, no, 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 no. Now we can never live in Green Bay. No, they were convinced that we were ruining our lives by moving here. What do you got a face hanging down here for? 
Come on, come on. What is it? Tell me. Ah, oh, Vince, it doesn't seem the right time here. You've got your mind on the game for Sunday. Come on, come on. Out with it. What is it? Well, Vince, it's just that sometimes I feel that the children have no life of their own. It affects everything they do, being your children. What? Well, take Vinny, for example. It affects everything for him. His schoolwork, his going out for the team, his getting a part-time job, friends, dates. I mean, well, it isn't very hard to figure out that in a town as small as this, you... What I'm trying to say, Vinny, is that I feel that in New York they had a sense of themselves as individuals, but... But here they're... They're just Vince Lombardi's kids. We got a chance to win this year. Aren't they excited about that? Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're excited about that. I mean, we really got a chance to win. Win! But we didn't win. Not on opening day. The Bears beat us 17 to 14. But it was five weeks before we lost again. Starr was now our number one quarterback, and Lombardi had convinced him how good he could be. Taylor and Horning ran like mad stallions. A reject from Cleveland named Willie Davis moved in and sealed our defensive line. They couldn't run away from Nitschke anymore because Willie was waiting for him. On Thanksgiving Day, we made mistakes, and Detroit beat us. While living with Lombardi that next week was an experience none of us wanted to repeat. So when we met the Bears again, we went out and stomped them 41 to 13. We won every game the rest of the season. We also won the divisional title and the right to play Philadelphia for the championship. Mr. Lombardi, I'm from the Bulletin. We have a report that Mr. Horning won't be playing this Sunday. Oh, why wouldn't he be playing? Well, they said he hurt his leg. Is there anything to it? Oh, nothing to it. Not unless he fell out of somebody's bed in the last hour. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, will you please? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Where do all these crazy rumors start? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. He better make bed check tonight. Or it won't be his leg that'll be hurting him tomorrow. It'll be his neck, because I'll personally break it. <laughs> I heard another rumor at the league banquet. Now what? That Bart Starr broke his arm? <laughs> no, that Jim Lee Holtz is going to resign from the Giants. Oh? Who told you that? One of the wives. Well, if it's true, so what? What are you going to do if they offer it to you, Vince? Right now, that concerns me about as much as that phony leg injury. the big one. We worked hard all year long for this one chance to be number one world champions. I hope it means as much to you as it does to me. And I think it does. So, go get them! <laughs> while it was all defense. I don't think we'd ever hit or been hit quite so hard. We had good scoring chances, but we made mistakes. So by the final seconds of the first half, we had a big lead in first downs and yardage, and we were behind 10 to 6. With time running out, Paul tried a field goal from the 13. An easy chip shot on most days, but he missed. We were still behind in the fourth quarter when I was sent back to punt. Come on, Max! Give it a ride, boy! Give it a bump! Well, when the ball came to me, all of a sudden I had a great idea. I thought. I don't know, but that's why you said the 
Let's get back on tell them I'm staying in. I got it? Now I'm staying in. I'll get out of here. Well, the truth is, I didn't know whether he wanted to hug me or kill me. And I didn't want to take the chance. I needed some sort of insurance. And I got it. Bart put it right on my head. Only then did I decide it was safe to go home. Nice going, Max. All right. No sweat, coach. All right. Now, don't let up. Don't let up, man. Don't let up. But we did let up. In our excitement and our inexperience, we let up. Ted Dean brought the kick back 58 yards. And five plays later, they went in for a touchdown. Down again, 17 to 13. And a lot of people were thinking about the missed chances in the first half. But Lombardi was thinking only of the time left. Fellas, this might be our last shot. We need seven points, we need them fast. So no mistakes now, you understand? No mistakes now. You can go to the two-minute drill if things get tight, okay? All right. All right. Now go out and get it. Come on, come on. right down the field. should have won. You played hard. I'm grateful to you. I let him down, Max. I didn't realize how much I wanted to win for that man. Not until today. And I let him down. What are you going to have? Uh, oh, God. Well, I don't think so. Uh, Marie, I've been thinking. Uh, maybe we shouldn't go back tonight, huh? Maybe you'd like to go up to New York for a couple of days and see some friends? No, I, I think I'd like to go right home. Oh. Mr. Lombardi? Uh, yes. Telephone for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Hello? Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, the boys played hard. Uh, now, Wellington, wait a minute. I can't even listen to this until after you've talked to... Oh, you did speak to Ovi. Well, what did he say? I see. Oh, I appreciate that. Right? Uh, I will. And thanks. How about that? The Giants? The Giants. Head coach, write my own ticket. That's... That's wonderful, Vince. 
He said he asked Oli for permission to talk to me. And Oli said he didn't want to let me out of my contract, but he didn't think that the executive committee would, would stand in the way of something that I wanted so much. It's nice of Oli, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It sure makes a difference, doesn't it? I mean, we'll all be going back to New York now, and that should make you happier, right, hon? <laughs> and I'll have the job I always wanted, and... And Vinny, he won't be just a coach of sin anymore, huh? <laughs> Are you going to accept Vince? Well, I, I told him I'd get back to him in a couple of days, but uh, I couldn't turn it down. I, I mean, I'd be out of my head to turn down an offer like that, wouldn't I? Decide what's best, Vince. I just want to be where you are. And I know the kids feel the same. Mrs. Lombardi, I love you. The New York Times didn't call it a rumor. It said it was a fact. No, yeah, I read the article too, Paul. It said the offer was a fact. It didn't say he'd accepted it. How can he turn it down? Why would he stay here if he can have the Giants? I'm still not going to believe it unless he tells me himself. Gentlemen, coach. Marie, sit here. Hi, Oli. Vince. Good to see you. Marie. Marie, what's the answer? I don't know. He didn't tell me that's the truth. He said he wanted the players to know first. A lot of lives may depend on the work these men are about to do. That's why they suit up as carefully as doctors. Bacteria, germs, don't belong here. Yet just one person gives off thousands of bacteria-laden particles every minute. Suits like these help keep bacteria under wraps. Some suits are still made of cloth, but these are made of DuPont Tyvek, a remarkable synthetic material. Tyvek lets air in but won't let most particles out. DuPont Tyvek holds back the bacteria-laden particles ten times better than cloth. Ten times. That's critical on this job, because this is a pharmaceutical laboratory. They're making medicines here, and DuPont Tyvek is helping keep trouble under wraps. DuPont, there's a world of things we're doing something about. Gentlemen, you may have seen in the papers where I've been offered the job of coaching the Giants. I feel it's important for me to explain to you my reasons for wanting to accept. I'm sure each of you has a lifelong ambition. This is mine. To head the team that's been so important to my life. In my own hometown. It's not every man that gets a chance to fulfill his dream. So I know that each of you can understand what that opportunity means. Of course, all the factors in my decision are not on one side. I mean, I've had to... I've had to consider my obligation to the board of directors of this club from whom I've asked and received such great support. I thank you, Obi. To the people of Green Bay and Wisconsin, who have lavished me with such devotion, and to whom I've become so devoted in return, Most of all, to the people in this room, to you, I demanded everything, and you've given it. 
There's more than spirit on this team. There's love. When I first came here, I promise you that if you were willing to sacrifice enough, I would lead you to victory. And you did sacrifice. But victory was nine yards away. And so my job, my commitment, isn't really finished. I believe in commitment. And I'll tell you this. I don't intend to be stopped nine yards away again, ever! So that means that every one of you will be back here in June at your playing weight. All of you. Including you, Nitschke. Yes, sir, you could be a star if ever they invent a position called rotten linebacker. But not on my team, mister. <laughs> and don't you laugh, McGee. You've got the hands and the brains. Now all you need is sense. And I'm gonna beat it into your head with a club if necessary. <laughs> and that goes for you too, Horning. You see your dollies this spring. But you come back here thinking nothing but football. You understand me, mister? At that moment, we would have followed him into hell. But I think we knew we were about to follow him into legend. Slater, Osborne, Truett, what brought these pioneers to Fort Worth? Land. Well, land and water. Water's easy to find in this part of Texas, but it's hard to hold on to. Ground is porous. Water soaks in, disappears. Fort Worth's a little different today, and holding on to water isn't the problem it used to be. DuPont helped us out on that. Now, there's close to 150 million gallons in this reservoir. What's keeping it there? Not steel or concrete. Something that's a lot less expensive to put in. A liner of DuPont Hypalon rubber. All by itself, the Hypalon is tough enough to keep the water from leaking away. DuPont Hypalon rubber. It's helping this city hold on to the water it needs. DuPont. There's a world of things they're doing something about. Portrait, Legend in Granite was brought to you by DuPont. DuPont. There's a world of things we're doing something about. It's a very special wide world of sports tomorrow afternoon. The dream game of the basketball season. Number one ranked UCLA takes on number two North Carolina State. Don't miss the action. Tomorrow at 2.15. A young husband desperately searches for his missing wife while the police hunt him as the prime suspect in her murder. And you'll never see me again. The ABC Suspense Movie, tomorrow night at 8.30. Katherine Hepburn makes her dramatic television debut in a brilliant film adaptation of Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie. Sunday night at 8.30 here on ABC. Mayor Bradley returns tonight from Washington, where he's been trying to get help for the L.A. energy crisis. The mayor will be here in our studios to tell us what happened. A big strike has ended tonight, with another strike, though, to begin locally, possibly in just an hour from now. And the Getty kidnap drama is over. Also tonight, Dr. George with the weather. Stu Nahan with sports. Christine Lunn reports on the undecorations. Chuck Henry reports on the Grassroots Theater, next on Eyewitness News. Presenting Ripley's Believe It or Not, a European general had a unique way of waking his troops. <laughs> Rama V, King of Siam, had 3,000 wives.
and 12 years ago, a precision jewel lever Carabelle watch by Bulliver sold for only $10.95. Today, it's still only $10.95. Believe it or not. Have you seen my sporty little Pontiac Ventura? Take a look at my brand new hatchback hatch. Holds lots of gear from front to back. Ventura! Well, I needed more, so I got a four-door. Ventura! Now, I like the way my new Sprint rides, but I especially love its soft insides. Ventura! It's sporty! Ventura. It's roomy! Ventura! It's low price! Ventura! It's not just any compact. Pontiac Ventura! Right. Saturday night at 11.30.